Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome to another edition of Rams Up Roundtable. I'm your host, Tom Quartz, at Rams Beat on Twitter. And I'm joined today by our Rams Up co-host, Mark, and regular Ian. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. Doing good. good. I mean, Had a lot of... Good. It's starting to heat up, huh, Ian? Yep, I'm going to say the chaos is starting soon. And yes, it is. Remember, starting. remember, it's BS season. Just be careful what you're hearing, all these weird things about, oh, my God, Zach Wilson would be such a great fit for the backup for the Rams. Or you're hearing <laughs> a bunch of other weird things yeah. about every team in the NFL. If it's not from your reliable team reporters and everyone knows who those people are for your specific squad and everyone should know who they are for the Rams, or if they're not the big NFL guys who are very credible, just just be careful. Just be yeah. careful. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> well, there's lots of uh, there's lots of factual news. Um, you know, lots yeah, of uh, players getting tagged today, and lots of players uh, uh, not getting tagged that yeah. we you know all thought would. There's um, a lot of players getting cut, cap casualties, and uh, so forth. So we're gonna dive into all of that. A little bit of Rams interest uh in the wide receiver group at uh, at the combine and uh and also in the free agency realm but we're going to just start with a little bit of a rapid fire news latest news and and just kind of react to it and and fly through it so uh so we're going to start with just kind of a uh you know the, this russ uh russell wilson cut right so he gets cut and and his dead cap this is such a bad contract that his dead cap is like 85 million i'm I'm rounding and the the it's it's so high this year it's just just this year it's so high that it is more than twice as much as the next two combined so 
the it's next so two crazy. added up to like 80 million it was two like a 40 million and a and a 40 million it was i don't know who was it was like yeah you know, i've been it, saying for a couple of years that i i I thought his play had fallen off. I mean, there's moments where he still looks like the old Russell Wilson, but uh, I don't know. I, th- I thought he was a little bit overrated at, at, in his last year or two as Seattle, but kind of saw this coming. Yeah, well, let Russell cook is Russell is cooked. And so, um, but, uh, you know, from our perspective, from the Rams perspective, we just want to juxtapose that for a second, Ian, with, that trade and then the Watson trade and all that Cleveland gave up and how much they gave Watson to 30 Garrett fully guaranteed versus our Stafford trade and what that has yielded. And yeah, with two firsts for Stafford. um, But here we are, you know, a Super Bowl trophy in hand and looking to run it back this year. So yeah, just, just uh, put some perspective on, on a couple of these, uh, you know, these mammoth, quarterback trades in the last few years yeah and let's not forget about jamal adams getting dumped off today and they gave up two first rounders for him the jets um were able to steal from the seattle seahawks as he gets cut with quandary Diggs today so i mean the rams they've made those big boy trades think of all the other players and obviously quarterbacks the most important and we're lucky we're just so lucky matt stafford's that dude great leadership great toughness no, no locker room problems, no off the field problems. And then the most importantly, dude's a baller and it's worked out. He's played great football every time he's been protected and has been healthy. He's been a top 10 quarterback, undebatable. And gentlemen, I mean, for a trade that monumental to give up multiple first rounders, what more could you have asked for? Shoot. All these yeah, other I mean, teams tried to copy it. us and it went down the drain and I know Cleveland, people will argue, hey, they're still making the playoffs. And that's true. It's because their roster is pretty dang good overall. But the Watson experiment has been bad. Let's just be honest. Off the field, troubling things, major surgeries and injuries on the field. We're, we're blessed. Rams Nation, we're blessed. Be grateful that Matthew Starr is our quarterback. And stop trying to get the future here so, so suddenly. Oh, my God, trade up for Bo. Oh, my God, trade up for Penix. <laughs> oh, my God. Please. Please realize how blessed we are to have a top 10 quarterback who's still slinging a rock. Please. Yeah, grateful. we're in the air and Aaron Donald and we're in the Aaron Donald window. And those yep. guys are probably about on the same timeline. And so, you know, it's, we got to push it, put this, push the chips in and, you know, mm-hmm. a, a second quarterback isn't going to help us, uh, nope. help us get, get over the hump. Right. So no, no time to start rebuilding. Um, so moving on to the next topic. So let's just uh, quick reactions to, one Brandon Staley being hired as the assistant head coach for the San Francisco not 49ers. Mark, what are your thoughts on that? I'm not sure what to make of that. You know, um, I, I guess he could help the 49ers with respect to the Rams, but maybe the opposite is true as well. Don't really know what his role there is going to be, right? He's just going to be some type of defensive assist uh, consultant, I guess, or has that even been defined? I want to uh, say Mark, he's the assistant head coach. If I read that correctly, somewhere yeah, he was assistant, assistant head coach is his title, yeah. but you know, okay, really he'll be pretty involved. Then he'll be yeah. pretty involved. Yeah, and I think, and I think I this think hire, think... real quick, I think this hire overall is, hey, we run the Seattle cover three scheme. That is the base four three. And everybody, real quick, just get let's get familiar with what that couple terms are. Four three meaning. There's four true defensive linemen, and then there's three standing up linebackers behind the D-line. There's two D-tackles, two defensive ends, and a three-point stance with their hand in the dirt. Usually you want bulkier guys, okay? Cover three, real quick, to sum it up shortly for everybody, is that you have three defenders that are dedicated to covering deep. Three, which is the cover three. Everybody else underneath. So that is the base of the 49ers defense, the base of the Seattle scheme that Legion of Boom was so great at and really good for 4-3 style defenses. That is the base of the 49ers defense. Bringing on Staley, him being a 3-4 guy, a nose tackle, two D tackles, two inside linebackers and two outside linebackers, which is what we run. We have is very, very much more multiple in terms of the things you can do out of a 3-4, in my opinion which is why Fangio's system was killing offenses so much. And I think why Kyle Shanahan wanted to bring him on, to get a different flavor of defense, because let's be real, 
four three defenses have blown multiple Super Bowl leads now in recent memory. <laughs> And they've been pretty good too, right? Steve Spagnuolo, Kansas City Chiefs, you can argue that that 4-3 defense has been historic and it's time for the Giants. But more than not, 4-3 defenses get exposed late in games for being a little too simplistic in terms of the finality of what they want to do to defend offenses. So bringing on Staley, I think, is a different flavor. Hey, what is your Fangio-style stuff to help us out late in games to stop screwing up Super Bowls and NFC Championship games? I think that's why Staley's there. Long yeah. Story short. My thought on that is, is that when I first saw that, I mean, if look, Shanahan is not, <laughs> he's the last guy that, that, you know, evolves, right. I mean, he is dead set in his ways. He loves that defense. Yeah. You know, Wilkes, Wilkes couldn't even execute it. And he, and he doubled down with, with his, you know, internal hire on the D down the D uh, uh, coordinator. And so my thought is, is that, Hey, he brings in somebody who's, uh, you know, extraordinarily, uh, good at attention to detail and just kind of like it from an administrative standpoint, like help him out with all of his administrative stuff, uh, a la the assistant head coach, but also to act as a uh, essentially a scout coach um, against his offense, because so many teams are running the three, four. Now most, most teams are running the three, four and they're even lot, incorporating yeah. that high shell, that Fangio high shell, right? It wasn't, that's just the Rams. It's, a lot of teams are increasingly, especially in the NFC. And so I feel like they bring him in as an expert in that area to help him with his offensive. Um, well, evolution. isn't that exactly what the Rams just did with the one hire? Um, I forget his name. They just brought someone on. Yeah, Sean Desai. He's a 4-3 guy. Right. So it's, it's, it's again, it's a different perspective into the things that you don't normally do. Right, right? yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so. hey, here's a question for Ian. It just struck me. You know, if they if they were to move to a three four, would Joey Bosa be a good fit for that? Um, uh, Nick Bosa for the Forty Nine ers I mean, yeah, doesn't that? I mean, they, I think he could do it, but I just think the skip. Like, I just think they are they are built for four three. They've drafted for four right, three. Right. Exactly. Uh, it, that's yeah. that's that's a far, that takes time. Like think about when we made the switch. Well, that's why Robert Quinn was was sent away because he was more of a four three defensive end guy, bulkier, hand in the dirt, not standing up. Even though I thought he did a good job, but I mean overall, you know, less than them made the right decision uh, to move on. And I, look at could they do it because they're so talented on defense? I'm sure they could have done it, but. For their window, right, the window of trying to win the championship, for them to have a complete overhaul of your language, of how you call plays with the players, a whole new playbook, there's there's very little um, transactional uh, word schemes that go over from 3-4 to 4-3, as I explained, you know, five minutes ago about how different it is. So I didn't, it wouldn't have made sense. And I always knew deep down Shanahan was not going to make that schematic yeah. switch yeah. in this type of window. Maybe when the window's over and then you can redo the roster and lean that way. But at this moment in time, with everyone they have there, it would be foolish. Just like us. Why are we? Why would we switch the three, uh, four, three? All of a sudden, it wouldn't yeah. make sense either. Shannon has definitely married to the. His, he loves his four, three defense. Yeah. Um, moving on to the next topic, let's touch on this NFLPA report card. Right. I mean, the Rams have 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 over and over come out on a on the on the, uh, you know, C to D um, end of the yeah. report card. And, and but, you know, let, let's just talk about what areas they're they're deficient in or getting bad grades in. And it's yeah. mostly there's two areas. It's number one. It's well, in, look, real, real, real quick, I have the report card in front of me. Should we just bank through it real quick? Like, in, yeah, in but it's are? just, yeah, but to summarize, it's mostly facilities, right? Yeah. It's mostly their facilities, right? Because they're in temporary facilities that were meant to be there for two to three years. Yeah. And they're now in their, it's going into their eighth year in these facilities. Yeah, it's crazy, honestly. That are just run down, right? The field yeah. is beautiful up there. Now they're going to move these temporary facilities to, to the valley to 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 uh with the hills, hills. but yeah, but yeah. it's still going to be temporary i don't know what if they're going to be you know different facility you know, different facilities but that's number one right now that's understandable they haven't been able to yeah m execute on a permanent practice facility which is a big deal and that's where these players spend the majority of their time and so of course if you're in trailers you know in these in these little 
Quonset huts, you're gonna get <laughs> yeah. you're gonna get bad. Now I, I thought they'd be worse. Like I mean, they're Is number it? 22 out of 32. Like I know. how are how are 10 teams worse than that? Well, you know what? It, well, Tom, it has to be those cold weather cities where things are just it's oh, just right, not. Right, right, it right. has to be right. I mean, I look. I mean, we can go through the report card. We're not gonna do that right now. Yeah. But I'm sure it ha- if I had to put money on it, it had to be, it has to be the cold weather cities that it's probably not enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, and right. interestingly enough, the other area where they didn't, where they have not re, uh, uh, graded well, is in um, uh, I don't know what the what the treatment what the, of families. That's treatment the one of I families. Want to talk yeah, about. what yeah, the yeah. hell is up with that? Yeah, treatment of families. That's that's yeah. that's that's exactly what it is. So yeah. that's what I was thinking of as well. So I mean, you know, yeah. I I think there's some uh, Jordan uh, Rodriguez looked into this at the combine because she was curious what the hell that meant and couldn't really get a straight answer from the, you know, anyone, but, of um, but she, you know, cause it's just not defined. And yeah. so, uh, you know, wanted more specifics. Rams really didn't know what it was. And so she started poking around with other, um, uh, with other, uh, people from other teams mm-hmm. and kind of came to the conclusion that it might have to do with stuff as, as i mean it seems nominal to us but if you're going every game maybe it's not like access to parking or mm, uh, or access to seats and things the like seat that thing, so, i mean i understand that the parking look at sofi stadium's gnarly i mean whoever anybody out there's been you know go as early as you can and beat the traffic park somewhere else take an uber five ten minutes down the road it's chaotic man so if that's the case that's kinda, chaotic. i get it but the seat thing i would understand i mean think about it gentlemen I mean, shoot, dude, like, I maybe there's some family that wants to go to every game, and I understand that, but it's a brand new stadium. I feel like seating, that shouldn't be an issue. And you know what? That's unfortunate thing about our, our Hall of Famers in this organization who've had issues with that. Eric Dickerson's been very vocal about seats and where he's gotten tickets and how crappy they've been in the past here in L.A., Coliseum and more at SoFi. So that's something hopefully that can be worked on because that's, that's just unacceptable. A D? Man, dude. I know. Our stars, I mean, the stars uh, and the and the uh influencers of on uh on youtube and and oh that's you know, a good point Tom. TikTok and all of those that's guys they get, you yep, know they, they get, get the premium stuff they You're get right. the premium stuff because they're adding you know, value um, i mean it's a it's an algorithm i didn't think, of, I didn't think about that we're trying to be lakered out here yeah, right? I, Howard, think, I mean do uh, the math i mean how hard is it you're talking about, about maybe 100 seats yeah for family uh, it could be more than that i mean you're talking about there's right. I mean, you're talking about 50, you know, 50 odd rostered players, their families. You got, you know, you got the the staff and their family. I mean, there's a lot of seats that need to go out to people. And, you yeah, know, there's a value true. judgment. So, but it, you're bringing up the star thing and the YouTubers and the TikTokers yeah, well, and them getting the all these like, premium seats. Yeah, I can see, it, I, if I were a family, I'd be like, screw these people. Like, we're the ones that are supporting, really. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and the, uh, you know, in these other cities, though, and you're, and, you know, it's all this is all a comparison, right? So you get a guy yeah. who plays for the Rams and he used to play for the Bengals. It's like, shit, my, and I used to get six seats right up front with my family, yeah. right? Yeah. But, you know, in, in SoFi, <laughs> you know, there's, know. there's a lot more. Uh, yeah. Lot more and, and, and I don't know. My, one of my, <laughs> this may sound a little harsh, but may, to me, it's almost like first world problems, you know. Um, Okay, I mean, you're yeah. not getting nice seats. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know? I know. Well, yeah. yeah, they want to be down there next to their next to their family member or whatever. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, was it like they're not getting like the the sideline passes like pregame? Maybe they don't right. allow that. Like, I, yeah. I, that would be kind of annoying too. I mean, you see Kelly and you see the Donald family. You see the star players. Maybe there's some other players that would, you know be up and coming. Maybe under players that do play, but they were like, hey, it'd be cool to have my family. Maybe they don't allow it. I'm just trying to rationalize why we're getting yeah. a D. The Rams right. getting a D, like, damn, dude. I mean, I know it's that's nasty. Tough. I was, that's I, tough, I, man. I, it's so funny because every dude. every year I open that thing, I've done it. I've, you know, it's kind of fooled myself every. I've, you, it's it's a year you forget about last year. I opened yeah. it up this year thinking, oh, my Rams are going to be at the top of the barrel, right? Everyone, yeah, you know, and yeah. Uh, what, what, so what are we right now? We're twentieth out of thirty-two. I mean, damn, dude. Let's we're not even in the top yeah. half. It's but look, real quick. Well, I have the grade. What are the good grades? Let's try to be positive at the end of this. Strength coaches A minus. Cool. Hey, coach A. Perfect. It's um, the people. Have... Look, the bottom line is the people get good grades. 
the facilities and policies get bad grades. Let's just, you know, just kind of sum it up. So, all right, moving on. Let's move on to a couple. Let's move on to a little bit of, of, uh, you know, uh, hard truths here about our two of the three of our weight bearing walls in our remodel year. So to start with, um, well, we'll we'll move Cooper into the wide receiver conversation we're about to have, but Aaron Donald. So Aaron Donald, uh, to recap, coming off the Super Bowl, he, uh, you know, said he might retire, which we all knew was code for I'm under contract. I have no leverage except I might retire. So he said, I might retire. And they gave him a new contract as a kind of a award, you know, as a, 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 I mean, he played great. He deserved it, et cetera. I, and I it. took that serious too, by the yeah, way. I was like, it was, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I, I, I felt like, you know, he wanted a, a new contract and, you know, get a hundred million dollars and that's the way to well, leverage it. I mean, right. that's the only leverage you have. No, that's that's hundred percent true. The only, that's yeah. the only leverage you have if you're under yeah. contract and, you know, it's like, you're not a free agent. You're not a this, you're not a that. It's like, oh, I'm going to quit, and unless you give me more money, and I mean, he didn't even get a new con. He didn't even get a new con. He didn't even get an extension. He just got a, sh- a straight up raise from twenty million <laughs> to thirty million for three years. Hey, so anyway, bottom line is he's now in the third year of going into the third year of that thirty million dollar a year contract, and you know he said very clearly uh, he loves playing with these guys. He's looking forward to coming back with all all these young guys next year, but there's still some questions in the, uh, you know, in the, in the clubhouse, whether or not he's going to try and leverage his situation for a bigger, for another contract. So just kind of, you know, no, there's no, there's no smoke. There's no nothing. There's just speculation. So anyway, if Aaron Donald came out and said, Hey, the cap's up to two fifty five and I'm only making 30, uh, you know, some of these guys are going to be making more than me, Chris Jones or whoever, some of these guys, um, I want, I want to raise next year from 30 to 35 or 40. And I want a new three-year deal for 120 fully guaranteed. I mean, what would your guys thoughts be on that? Go ahead. You want to go first? Oh, well, uh, my, my reaction is, um, I'd be, I'm sitting here hearing this. It really annoys me. <laughs> you know? I can see uh, on your I, face. Yeah, I, I could. I could understand. I mean, I love Aaron Donald, um, and we're, we're trying to get something done here as a team. Uh, to me, it comes off as a little bit selfish. Um, how now, much? He hasn't you know, said this. Just to yeah, be fair. It, yeah, just if, be clear. If he hasn't were, said yeah. this. This is all speculation. Yeah. Well, 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 well the, the real quick. That, the fact I just think about how Les and Sean haven't been like, yeah, he's coming back. They haven't said that yet when they've been asked. No, they, I mean, that's a little like they haven't mm-hmm. said that yet. Well, like, uh, hey, maybe going, going through his process, you know. May, maybe I should start by saying whoever started the speculation, I'm annoyed at them <laughs> because why? Why create Ourselves, a problem? Maybe. Own, <laughs> yeah, own, I don't, I don't know GM. where this. I don't know what the genesis of this is, but if it were co- to come to pass, <laughs> I could see giving him a nominal raise some percentage based on the increase in the salary cap. Uh, but if he's going to play this I'm retiring game. I hope not. Yeah, I know. But you can't, you just can't keep on doing this. There's, you know, but love Aaron and Donald. I don't want to piss him off. But One of the, yeah, and one of the, the, you know, just as a backdrop to this whole conversation, when players do this crap, then teams, you know, start to look for trade partners who for a team oftentimes look for trade partners for the team that is yeah. willing to give somebody that the deal that they're not willing to give them. Right. Well, in this case, Aaron Donald also has a no trade clause full yeah. 100% ironclad, no trade clause. So yeah, it, it creates a lot of leverage for him, but you know, anyway, just wanted to touch on that. It's no, no real news. Cause the, none of this is out of the mouth of Aaron Donald or his camp. So, but something to keep Please, an eye on, it. right? Please He's always, damn it. He is always, every single time he's in the last year of his contract, he's always leveraged it into something else. So it's that the history, you know, let, let history be thy guide is kind of in play here. So just keep something to keep an eye on. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. 
You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles. We win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, Everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Um, next topic is <clears throat> wide receiver interest from the LA Rams. Okay, so the Rams obviously have had given Cooper Cup an extension, um, mm-hmm. you know, hit on absolute pure gold with puka Naku in the fifth round oh, and you. um you know and, and as an all pro and re-signed their a uh, super their super solid number three um in uh with robinson right in in a very you know yeah. uh really really good contract right it's something like three to four million with some incentives up to five or something like that so um you know demarcus it was so good for us and so, you know, you think with maybe Skoranek and Tutu and, you know, and some other guys in, in backup roles, it's like, we're all set. But surprisingly, the Rams had, ex- it's reported that had expressed interest in, um, in Evans before he resigned with uh, yeah, Mike Evans, man. Yeah. With Mike Evans before he resigned with Tampa Bay. And they were in the they were in conversations with him. They've met with several cool. wide receivers at the uh, at the combine, including guys that they'd have to trade up for, like uh, like Roma Dunze, Dunze, man. Yeah, that guy's good, and, man. and so forth. So I mean, he's probably a top ten guy. And so, yeah, um, yeah it's just interesting to me. I, I mean, Mark, what are your thoughts on the Rams doubling down on wide on top tier? wide receiver talent like Mike Evans and Roma Dunze. And what is that? How does that reflect on perhaps Cooper cups uh, availability and, and health situation? Well, I, yeah, to me, it's um, to me, it means that they are concerned about his long-term health as simple as that. Uh, this offense, the Sean McVay offense, he's got to have two receivers, two highly productive receivers, if not three, and right now, as the roster stands, if, if Cooper Cup is banged up early in the year, uh, the machinery doesn't grind to a halt, but, you know, it, it's handicapped a little bit. That's what I, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to make of it. I'm, I mean, uh, I, don't, I certainly don't, don't. If Cooper Cup's 100%, um, do you go out and get Mike Evans just for insurance or to sit down to Marcus Robinson? That doesn't sound... I don't know. It doesn't sound like it would be a high priority unless you're concerned about Cooper Cup. But I'm just guessing. I, I could get, be completely wrong. Ian, thoughts? Look at guys. The end is coming. It is. <laughs> I'm just looking. I've, I've, me and Paul have alluded to it. We've talked about it. All of us have talked about it. 
the, the window is closing with this trio of staff cup and Donald in the next year or two, two years, max. I thought you but were talking about the planet earth there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The, 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 we'll still be floating in outer space. Everybody will be okay. Um, no, but I, Look at guys. We just got to be honest with ourselves. I love Cooper Cup, all-time great Ram, legend, legend. Whatever that means to you, he is that for the LA Rams. He's had three season-ending, altering injuries since he's been a pro. 2018, he tears his ACL midway through. He would have been a Pro Bowler, All Pro, probably win the Super Bowl that year. Let's just be honest. We beat the Patriots with, with a healthy Cooper Cup. We, 2019 was cool. 2020, he can't play the second round of playoffs because he he bruised a tendon and something in his knee, another knee injury. I don't remember exactly what that was, but he couldn't, you know, he was hurt that Seattle game. He injured it then and couldn't play the Green Bay game where he was heavily needed and we lost. 21 was MVP Cup, great. And then 2022 has the tightrope surgery on the ankle because he jacked it up pretty bad. And then last year, he's on and off hurt. Had a one week against the Eagles where he looked completely healthy, and then that was it. And he still played good, let's be honest. It wasn't bad, but he wasn't 100% Cooper Cup. And with him having such massive money invested in him and then that position overall, I mean, we can't have another season like that. And then let's just be honest about the whole wide receiver group as a whole. He has two more void years, but this is really the last year of his deal, if we keep it real, right? I know there's... 25 and 26, but those are void years, if I'm not mistaken. So this is really the final year of his guaranteed salary, 2024 coming up. Not only that, Skoranek will be a free will be a free agent. Tutu will be a free agent. Their rookie contracts will be done after the season. D. Rob was only re-signed for one year, and then so it's really just Puka's is guaranteed any runway for the foreseeable future. So the Rams are being smart by looking into hey. Let's not just worry about today and this upcoming season. What's it gonna what's it gonna be next season and the beyond that? And I think it's smart of them to look forward because I think if you're just drafting for need when it comes up, you're in trouble, man. And look at Logan Bruss. We drafted for need and look how that turned out. Look how other positions that we've drafted for need have turned out when it was, oh my God, we're screwed if we don't draft that position. So I think Rams meeting with Odunze, pursuing Mike Evans. I'm sure they're going to meet with a ton of other mega talented wide receivers, which the draft is insane, by the way, for just raw athletes. I've been starting to study some of these receivers and, and offensive tackles and other players. Jeez Louise, we're getting some freak athletes entering this upcoming uh, you know draft, and we're going to get some good players, I feel. But my whole point is, long story short, is, Rams are being smart by meeting with college guys and even trying to pursue other established players because not only are we trying to be all in now, but we got to think of the future too. And Cup's time is winding down. We just got to be honest. Yeah, I mean, this you, they can't cut him this year. So this is the year. I mean, we're, you know, we're talking about it Donald is. and Stafford, yep. and this is it. You know, Cup Cup isn't as old as those guys, but he's you know no, he's, he's, he's not. breaking down. You know, he's he's physically as old as those guys. Real quick, and, he's also our best fullback. Like, you know, that like, people forget about that. Best wide receiver, then he's blocking middle linebackers and DN every other play like a fullback. And he's great at it, but that's aged him clearly as well. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. And so this is the year. I mean, we got <clears> – <throat> anyway, we'll, we'll get more into that. You know, I've been harping on that ever since <laughs> – beginning of last year right that last year was a cash in year and get yeah. a bunch of young guys in there and that's exactly what this is turning out to be i mean obviously overperformed last year with all those you know that fantastic draft class and yeah. some some stellar free agent signings um but you know, really reflect on last year's job i mean yes. oh, I mean, that, we should have went. We should have had a deep playoff run. Honestly, it should have been a fantastic season. No, they, they were. They were. Should have been. Were, they were close. I mean, if they had believed that they could have done that, I and mean, this is Paul Wally's point, is that if they believed that they could have done that and invested in some special teams and a backup yeah. quarterback, it yeah. might have been different, right? And so, yeah. uh, but they didn't believe it. They thought it was a. Uh, they thought it was going to be a. Kind a of retool a, year. a retool you know? year and um really wasn't much there but anyway the nfc I know. Was so weak but gentlemen let me ask you i i how how high do you think the rams are going to take a receiver 
if I had to put money on it, I think they're going to trade up for for a receiver in the first round. I think they are. I it's really, going to be really pricey, though. I, I, I think they're going to do it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. But the math is going to be, you know, they may have to give up. They could potentially have to give up a first rounder next year, uh, at least a second rounder next year. Um, I, I'm not it's saying like a big trade up. I'm not saying a big trade up like to the top eight, but like I think you know we're at 19. I think maybe like upper teens, closer to 10 in that range. But if you're if you're looking at one of those top three receivers, I, I don't know, man. Real tw- quick, real quick, a Doomsday's legit. The LSU duo, uh, Neighbors and Harris Harris Jr., if I remember it correctly. Uh, right, yeah, is it Young? I'll look um, it up. Gosh, I should be. I should know my name. I should the Florida State receiver. Uh, who else am I blanking on right now? I mean, oh, you put Keon Coleman in that group. He's pretty good too. Yes, he's pretty good too. I mean, it's it is slam dunk ballers at the receiver position. It's it's crazy. So I think if any of those guys. And obviously, we get closer to the draft, we can start talking about them a little bit more. But yeah. I think if those guys are available, I think they're going to try to get one of them. Yeah, well, I, really I think he could stay at 19 and get – I don't know if you're talking about Ricky Pearsall or Keon Coleman or the number two receiver at LSU. I think they'll all be there at 19. Odunze, oh, no, neighbor, Odunze Neighbors, and Harrison. Harrison. Yeah, I expect them yeah. to be gone pretty soon. But yeah. I, think now, they might, I think they might trade back oh. and then grab somebody like Ladd McConkey. In the mid twenties, yeah, if they did. I think I think they trade back, get a McConkey who's right up the Rams' alley, and you know who's expected to go, uh, you know, kind of late, 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 late first round, and then you also pick up another pick, and then maybe you can package some of those second rounders for something, you know. So I, I there, there's so much quality here that there I don't think it. you need to trade up to get a superstar. I mean, we have a superstar, Ooh. so. And I, real quick though, I just think they're gonna not gonna stay at nineteen. I don't think they are. They're gonna trade up or trade down. I don't think nineteen. I think, 19 I, think is the spot I, I, I 100% agree. I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think and, it's and, trade down because there's so like to your point, Ian. There's so many good pe- There's so many good players is. on the board. They're gonna see all these guys, and they're gonna be like, "Hey, let's trade down, get some other picks. We're gonna pick a guy. We're gonna get a guy that we want anyway." And you know how the Rams are. They're not like obsessed with four three forties and other stuff. They're just, you know, they, they're looking at different metrics. They, yeah. I think the, um, I've been going back and forth on this and I've decided that. And I think the consensus is there's about 15 guys that are really, really true high grade first round picks. Rams are picking 19th. So they either move up, but it's so costly you move back. And like Ian said, you can actually, you know, if look at it, I call it the doomsday situation, Coleman Shelton and Kevin Dotson both leave. Now you want a wide receiver and an interior offensive lineman. In that case, you move back. Yeah. And you can yeah. get them both. Oh, Brian Thomas Jr. Sorry. I who the it. receiver I was talking about it. I mean, him and Malik neighbors is like DK Metcalf and, um, and AJ Brown at Ole Miss, where you're like, dude, these it's it's a Jarvis Landry OD, OBJ. I mean, it's necessarily the same skill sets, but like a duo where you're like, dude, these both these guys are insane. Or even like a Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, like these guys are filthy, obviously, with everyone else. And we'll get closer to draft time, we'll talk about them more. But I just want to correct, make sure I get that name right. Brian Thomas Jr., that, that's a freak athlete right there with neighbors as well. Woo, we'll see, man. I mean, the, it's hey. I wouldn't be mad at it based off the situation I outlined about no receivers other than Puka going to be on the roster next year. Yeah, if they could move back and get uh, Powers, uh, Ricky, uh, the uh, Oregon interior offensive lineman, and Lad McConkey. Yeah, that'd be yeah. true. I mean, I mean, free agency is going to dictate all of this too, right? Let's be honest. Depending yeah, on well, the reason right. and sign, that's going to flow into. Him. So let's anyway. move into free agency real quick. Let's let's yeah. talk about the tag players, the players that that notably have not been tagged and then the players that have been cut and there are more to come and we all know that but as of this recording here at you know six seven o'clock pacific time on tuesday here are the notable tag players right Pittman, burns um johnson uh matabuke winfield josh allen t higgins uh Sneed, and and antoine winfield so 
good group, you know, right? I, I mean, and we were talking, you know, kind of before we we got into this about uh, the history of tag players being traded, right? And it's not that great, right? Most of these tag players are tagged, and then they're you know to buy time to work out a longer term deal with their team. That's just let's just you know that's just the history of it. Not saying that yeah. it couldn't happen, but you know, there's a lot more conversation about a tag player getting ready to be traded than ever happens. And there's a lot of reasons for it because yeah, the agree. new team has to give a long-term contract. Otherwise they're not going to give up a lot of assets and, you know, it's just that aren't tagged that are going to become free agents that are looking for a haul um, yeah. are Chris Jones, um, Wilkins from, uh, from the uh, Dolphins, Saquon, you know, a couple of running backs, which, you know, we all know Saquon and Josh Jacobs. Um, Ridley, Xavier McKinney, some of these guys, right? Yeah. You know, they're going to be free agents, free agents. Every running back you can think of. (laughs) Yeah, every running back you can think of. But, you know, you got, you know, Jacobs and and Barkley are the premier guys. But the point is the Rams, let's face it, they don't, they don't, very rarely uh uh pay free agents right they don't believe free agents or they think free agents are free agents for a reason and much 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 more inclined to trade high picks for somebody that's already under contract for a whole bunch of reasons we can get into another time but the players they love are the players that get cut so uh darius williams one of our old buddies right um, yeah. Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, Zuma, like um, Eric Kendricks got cut. That'd be um, cool. Jerome Keep Baker, in LA. Right. Yeah. I mean, so some of these guys could be had for, I don't know if some of these guys are on, are in the mode of, of uh, reclamation years or whatever they're out, whatever they are, but those kinds of players like to come back to the Rams. So anyway, just wanted to throw out some of those names, and um, I, I like some of those names, Tom. I like Kendricks to be tuned, teamed up with Jones. Keep him, at, you know, he's a UCLA Ooh. guy. Went, went with the Chargers, right? Purposely to stay in LA. Um, I can see him. You know, he's already played in a three-four scheme. He's got a year under his belt in that. He can come with us, stay in the city. I don't, I don't, I don't see why that wouldn't be a good, good option as our second inside linebacker. Pretty good, Dude, I think. Yeah. Quandre Diggs, who has been a pain in the ass on our side. For many, many years, and who Matthew Stafford says is a great safety. Him and Stafford have a great relationship. Accordingly, every time they're, you know, they have conversations on the field, that's all you ever hear. That'd be a cool signing to be a safety for us. I wouldn't, I would be very accepting of that. And then um, those are the two that just right off the bat, I'd be like, boom, we can fill them in as the starting guys on our, on our defensive unit. Mark, right would you away. have, would you like to have Darius Williams, Williams back? Oh, and Darius, uh, you, Jesus. I yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I think he had a pretty good year with the Jags, as far as I know. So yeah, I mean, he all he was a big play guy for the Rams. I, I liked him. Um, we certainly have a need. He'd be, I guess, what you call a tier two cornerback. The problem is, you know, would you want Akilo and Darius? Would you know, who would you rather have? That. Who would you rather have, Mark, Akilo or Darius? I I really don't. I I'm not qualified to answer that. I think Akilo because he's you know he was here last year and he he's uh you know better to to roll with what you had last year if it was working that would be my but I don't feel strong you Ian, Ian Akilo or Darius it's a quick question man because look let's 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 have a little nuanced mini conversation about this Akello was awesome up and was awesome the first part of the year let's be yeah. real the film doesn't lie he was legit yeah he got and then he then he pulled his growing and then he was played through it props to him he didn't bitch about it he didn't complain about it he didn't make news about it only little reporters would kind of say hey man okay was playing through that or he would say it's no excuse and i respect the hell of that gladiator mentality man but again when you're not 100 percent, you can't be the you can't be the legit player you know you can be which he was and I think Darius would would require just more money. So based off Akello's right. healthy play, based off the money, Akello to be our one of our starting corners again would be would be the right move, both financially and both from a skill set standpoint. Now, Darius Williams back on an affordable deal would be awesome too. I would feel comfortable with them two being our starting outside corners, most definitely. 
And for all you Rams fans out there that complained and bitched about Darius Williams his last year with us when we won a championship, do you not realize the scheme we were doing that was pissing everybody off, the uh, the very uh, soft zone, seven years off the ball? Can you can you tell me any corner that would be, oh, my God, he's so great in that scheme? You know, we've changed since then a little bit, which Darius was really great at press man coverage, really great at the match zone when Brandon Staley was with us, when he was intercepting pick sixes and making crazy plays. It's not going to be that same Raheem Morris off zone Super Bowl defense. So I would welcome them both back. Either or would make me happy. But Akello for the money and the most recent good play when he's healthy, I choose that. And that would alleviate the need to draft a cornerback early. You still probably want to draft one in the third, yeah. fourth round, someone there, somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some, yeah. There's you some Rams corners out there. That... We're going to educate you here on this pod about t- talking crap about certain players for not a good reason. <laughs> Darius uh, was a good player. Let's not get it twisted. I'll Let's never forget that that, that pick six in Seattle, man. That was like a gem. Yeah, it was great. Great time. Yeah, Darius. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously uh... – a little longer in the tooth since then, but uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, but that just means he might come cheaper. So, depending on what kind of suitors he has, so yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. I, I just feel like there's so many players out here that are going to be free agents that are cut. I mean, that, not to mention the guys that are are trade bait with guys with teams wanting to move off of them, and that's what the Rams really like to do is trade away draft picks to get proven players under contract and. uh so I, I think the Rams are just going to be ex- over the next several weeks extremely, extremely aggressive. And, oh, it's going to um, be great. And you know, and they're you know they said this these free agent situations with with like Dotson and Witherspoon, all these guys, and you know Coleman Jelton, <laughs> they have to bake. They have to have time to you know those they want to give those guys the respect to go out and find out what their value is in the free market. And yeah, but things are going to get hot and heavy. I mean, gentlemen, we're going to meet next time. Free agency would have start. We'll have, have one day of chaos. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be so much to talk about. And will you I be excited? Will you be excited if their first signing is a kicker? <laughs> depending, depending on who it is, I'll feel better about it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a that's a position we haven't I'm talked ho- about. I'm hoping, that, I'm hoping it is. I, I, not necessarily the first, but I hope they just get that addressed. They got to. Yeah, I feel that like out. I think they think that kickers are just you know they can always they can figure it out later and uh, <laughs> you know and <laughs> just because I'm like hey look what we did with Matt Gay you know he's off the scrap heap and next thing you know two years later we turned him into a. Uh, you know, our, our highest paid kicker in the yeah, history our, of, of our, uh, our special teams kicker whispers turned him into the highest paid kicker, you know, so we yeah, can do it again. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy. So, I know. But anyway. oh, yeah, this is it's going to be guys. I'm excited, man. It's going to be a crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's going to be crazy. Is it, March, is it March 13th? Is it March 11th is in the negotiating where all the early signings yeah. happen. It's not official, but you know, you hear the, all the early yeah, news. The, the, like, you're allowed, oh, they're you allowed to start. Terms. Oh, they're, you allowed to start they're allowed to start yeah. having conversations. A couple I'm going to put in my leave slip right now. Yeah. On Monday. So it's going to be a good time. And, and last year we knew the Rams were, you know, oh, we have to be disciplined. And, you know, they yeah. have 75 million in dead cap already. And they discipline meant we, we can't go out and start to, spend it was a boring off season but um this year it's a whole different ball game they they saved up and it's time to splurge because aaron <laughs> donald, aaron right. donald and matthew stafford and cooper cup are weight bearing walls or yeah are uh have have only so much life left in them so anyway yeah. well let's wrap it up there guys good conversation and uh teeing all this basically all this stuff was teed up teeing up you know for the next week or two so Really look forward to those conversations, and uh, thanks yeah, for being here. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up there. This yes. has been the Rams Up Roundtable. Look forward to talking to you guys next week. And uh, again, I'm Tom Court, your host at Rams Beat on Twitter, joined by my co-host Mark and Ian. And uh, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Heck yeah, we got the money. Time to spend and win another championship, baby. Let's go. Horns up. That's going to do it for this episode of 
remember you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.